Hello students, I hope all of you are doing fantastic mathematics. Today, I'll talk about a numbered theory toolkit. Numbered theory toolkit for mathematical olympiads such as IOQM. IOQM is the first level of math olympiads in India. AMC 10, American Math Competition and similar contests worldwide. So all of these contests are actually going toward the real International Math Olympiad where only six students from each country participate. And this particular toolkit will get you started. I will tell you about some of the main ideas. I'll tell you about the books that you should follow if you're just starting out. And I'll tell you about some learning strategies that has worked really well. If you are new to this channel, welcome. We talk everything about mathematical sciences. Chidda has outstanding programs on math, physics, computer science, Olympiads, ISI, CMI entrances, research projects for schools. If you are interested, check in the link in the description. I think you will like it. All right. So the first thing that the number theory toolkit has, this is absolutely simple but useful, are the Number types. Number types. So basically, integers, how to divide them into primes and composites. And then rational numbers. Rational numbers. And then irrational numbers. Irrational numbers. Okay. And if you are really curious, you can actually talk about transcendental numbers. Transcendental numbers, okay? So, uh, most of the stuff about number theory, most discussion actually over around integers, this part. Elementary number theory is really a discussion on integers. So, you make sure that you really look into this part well. One good resource for this, and really the only way to master this sort of stuff is through problems. One really good place is the Math Circle book by Foman. It has some really good resources, especially the chapters on Divisibility 1 and Divisibility 2. Look out for that. The second thing, and this is also equally important, is a method to tackle expressions or statements involving integers. This is using mathematical induction. Maybe you have heard about it. Mathematical induction is a very beautiful way to prove mathematical statements. For example, I could say, show that 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n is n into n plus 1 by 2. It's a very common formula. Many of you already know this. There are two ways of doing this. I can call one of them a deductive reasoning, the other one as that inductive reasoning. Fun fact deductive reasoning is deductive of course but in induction mathematical induction is also essentially a deduction it's a philosophical question we can talk about it in a later video but let's come back to this so here is method one and this is what gauss did gauss is one of the greatest mathematicians of all time and he is credited to this particular method what he did is he wrote down the numbers in the opposite order and he added up the columns. Each column adds up to n plus 1. Right? Each column adds up to n plus 1. So there are n of them. So if you add all of them up, you'll get n times n plus 1. But you have double added everything. Because you have done that twice. Two rows. So twice added everything. So you divided by two. 
that's the method one i call this the deductive reasoning the inductive reasoning which is a very powerful tool inductive reasoning is like this that you test the particular formula for n equal to 1 test for n equal to 1 so 1 plus 2 plus up to n equals to n into n plus 1 by 2 is this true for n equal to 1 is this true for n equal to 1 well for n equal to 1 the left hand side is just 1 and the right hand side is 1 times 1 plus 1 by 2 which is also 1 so yes it matches up for n equal to 1 second step you assume for n equal to k so 1 plus 2 up to k is equals to k into k plus 1 by 2 this is your inductive assumption finally you prove for n equals to k plus 1 prove for n equals to k plus 1 how do you do that well what i'll do is i'll just pop i'll just show this as an example this is a very simple example many of you already know this what I'll do is I'll add k plus 1 to both sides. What do I want to show? I want to show in the formula n into n plus 1 by 2, in this particular formula, if I replace n by k plus 1, I will get this sum. Okay? So just take the LCM on the right hand side, 2 times k into k plus 1 times plus 2 times k plus 1 k plus 1 times k plus 2 by 2 which is k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 by 2 this much is your n and see it, it exactly matches up this is your n and this is your n plus 1 by 2 and the proof is complete so this is called an inductive proof you should try many many problems on mathematical induction because they are very useful not for IOQM maybe at the initial stage because you don't have to write proofs but induction is a very useful tool in the long run after IOQM you have RMO where you have to write proofs so it's best to know induction a very good source of example problems are from elementary number theory this is let me write it elementary number theory by David Barton it's a very very nice book you can definitely get a lot of example problems on mathematical induction of course math circle also has examples uh, there are examples and challenges and fields of pre-college mathematics those books also contain examples okay let's move on to the third idea the third idea, this is not explicitly written in many books. It's obviously there in those books, but it's not explicitly written as a chapter. It's called forms of a number. I always think that this should be a separate discussion because students, when they are starting out with the Mathematical Olympiad journey, they get confused a little bit about this. So I'll give you an example. Forms of a number means if when you want to comment in general about a number the evenness of the number or the oddness of the number the divisibility of the number by three and so on so let's check the even odd case all even numbers can be represented by two times some number so 2k and all odd numbers can be represented as 2k plus one one of the popular strategies in elementary number theory is that you solve a problem for all even numbers first replace n by 2k and then for all odd numbers replace n by 2k plus 1 it's a very standard strategy so similarly what you can do is you can talk, talk about well I call this jack, king and queen numbers <laughs> basically what you do is you divide a number by 3 the remainders can be 0, 1 or 2. So 3 times k, 3 times k plus 1, 3 times k plus 2. So any number k 
can be written in either of one of these three forms. 3 times k if it is divisible by 3, 3 times k plus 1 if it's divisible by, it's not divisible by 3 but the remainder is 1 and 3k plus 2 if the remainder is 2. Again, you do a similar kind of analysis and you, maybe you do case-wise, you do plug in n equals to 3k, n equals to 3k plus 1, n equals to 3k plus 2. So, it's important that you are very familiar with the forms of a number strategy. And this is, a uh, lot of problems on this is actually available in Math Circles by Foreman. By Foreman, okay. Then, the fourth thing that I would suggest in the toolkit is theory of congruence. Sometimes this is also known as arithmetic of remainders. Arithmetic of remainders. So, maybe you have looked into problems like this that what is the remainder when 9 to the power 2024 is divided by 8. This is a very simple kind of a problem that uses this trick. What happens is that you notice that 9 divided by 8 produces remainder 1. And you raise it to the power 2004. So another way of writing this, this statement is 9 is congruent to 1 mod 8. The remainder is 1. Another way of writing this is 9 is congruent to 1 mod 8. Another way of a geometric way of thinking about it is 9 minus 1. The difference of these left hand side and the right hand side. The difference of these two numbers is divisible by 8. Right? Okay. So, one of the properties of this particular relation and there is a lot of discussion that has to go into this. This congruence relation three bars relation is an equivalence relation that's a very powerful thing if you have not thought about equivalence relations i strongly recommend that you can search for this in chinta's youtube channel as well i have had a very good discussion on it equivalence relations are very important to understand one of the properties is you can raise both sides by the same power 2024 but 1 to the power anything is just 1. So this is just 1. So 9 to the power 2, 0, 3, 2, 4 also produces remainder 1 when divided by 8. This is of course a very simple example of what you can do with theory of congruence. Look up again Barton. Barton is a very good source of examples for this. And Challenger, Challenges and Thrills of Pre-College Mathematics which is shorthand for CTCPM. I write it as CTCPM. Many students in Math Olympiad circles do that. So, these are the two books with a very good set of problems on uh, theory of congruence. Now, once we have gone up to theory of congruence and arithmetic of remainders, there are some other topics that you can study at the IOQM level. For example, you can study number theoretic functions. Number theoretic functions. They, these are related to number of divisors, number of numbers which are co-prime to a certain number, and so on and so forth. You can study Pythagorean triples. Pythagorean triples. Again, a very interesting special case when you work with triples of numbers, some of the squares of two numbers is equal to the third number. So, for example, 3, 4, 5. Right? So, Pythagorean triples have very beautiful properties and many problems are devised on them. You can talk about things like greatest integer function, integer function, which has some very beautiful problems modeled on it. But more or less, this is the main corpus of ideas on which most of the problems will be created. Now, if you are attending the Chinta Math Olympiad program or ISI CMI entrance program for IOQM, for AMC 10 and so on, you must be attending the five days a week problem solving sessions. So, you would see these concepts come over and over again. And it's important to understand that just knowing the concept is of no value. 
you have to know how to apply the concept in the context of a problem. Only then you have true mastery on this idea. Just knowing the concept is nothing. Okay. So make sure you solve a ton of problems. And that's why I don't like manual styled books. Because they just list out the concepts and they do not give contextual problems maybe. And these problems should be fun. The discussions around them should be fun. So I really like math circles. Please use that. Barton's number theory. Very nice book. CTCPM that is the challenge essentials of pre-college mathematics. Extremely good. And then if you go on to, if you, are, if you have to go one step higher, you can work on structures of number theory. Uh, this is by Tichu and Q and some, there are some more authors. So I hope this video was useful for you. If you are working on IOKM, make sure to take the model test that we have or AMC 10 model test, whichever you are taking. I'm sure you will do really well and you will have a lot of fun while solving these problems. These problems are really fun. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and keep on doing great mathematics. Okay, bye.